Congenital nasolacrimal duct obstruction is the most common cause of epiphora in infants. The most common reason for the CNLDO is incomplete canalization at the lower end of the nasolacrimal duct. The clinical signs of CNLDO are typically watering, discharge, matted lashes, an increased tear film height, and a delayed fluorescein dye disappearance test. Dacryocele or dacryocystocele is a rare clinical presentation of CNLDO. It typically presents as a bluish swelling seen over the medial canthus since birth. Here, we describe the case of an 18 day old girl who had bilateral swellings over the lacrimal sac area since birth which were gradually increasing in size. The child was systemically stable and was born from an uncomplicated normal delivery. It is theorized that a dacryocele develops because of a functional obstruction at the level of the common canaliculus which is the valve of Rosenmuller above and a simultaneous persistent membrane at the level of the valve of Hassner below. The fluid of the infected material therefore cannot drain out from the mesolacrimal duct and collects within the sac. Gradually, this increases in size and bulges into the area below the inferior turbinate and presents as an intranasal cyst, which when seen endoscopically through the nose, the cysts are large enough to block the entire airway passage on the affected side. Here, you can see that the inferior turbinate bears a large intranasal cyst below it and the airway passage is completely blocked. Infants are obligate nasal breathers and in bilateral dacryoceles, the nasal passages on both sides can be blocked and the child may present with respiratory distress. There are many reports in literature that have discussed this event. During breastfeeding, there is a real possibility of the child choking as well. Therefore, urgent intervention in the form of endoscopic marsupialization of the intranasal cyst in cases of bilateral dacryocele is essential. After adequate decongestion of the nasal passages, an endoscope is introduced into the nasal cavity to visualize the intranasal cyst. Taking care not to damage the surrounding structures, a sickle knife is introduced into the nose and an incision is taken horizontally into the intranasal cyst. You can now see some purulent material exuding out. The incision is gradually extended to allow more of the infected material to drain into the nasal cavity. As the incision is extended, Simultaneous external compression over the lacrimal sac may be given to aid the drainage of the contents into the nose. Observe the enormous quantity of the mucopurulent discharge. Using a suction cannula, all the material is drained out as the dacryocele continues to ooze more material. However, a single incision is not enough. As Ali and colleagues have demonstrated in their paper, Two incisions in the form of a cruciate marsupialization is required and therefore a vertical incision is then initiated in a plane perpendicular to the previous nick by rotating the sickle knife upwards and carrying it forward. Any tags of redundant mucosa can be removed with a pair of mucosa holding forceps. Probing is subsequently done to confirm the patency of the nasolacrimal duct. The same procedure is carried out on the other side here the left side. However, the intranasal cyst on this side is much smaller in size. 
A sickle knife is used similarly to create a longitudinal incision on the wall of the intranasal cyst. Once the mucopurulin discharge is seen and the cyst is drained, the sickle knife is then rotated upwards to create the cruciate pattern of mix. Suction is used again to drain the infective material. This technique has been shown to be very effective in dacryo seals with intranasal cysts and has helped us in going from this to this. Dacryo seals are uncommon but can be potentially life threatening as they present with respiratory distress. Endoscopy guided marsupialization is the technique of choice for treating them. Ophthalmologists must be aware of all the possible complications that may arise from lactoceles. Truly, a nick in time does save none. Thank you.